everybody. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a red rye ale, which is not really like a real beer style or anything. Uh, it's more like an amber ale made with some rye in it, uh, but it should be a lot of fun because I haven't brewed with rye in a while and it is a very, very interesting ingredient to put in your beer. So for malted grains, obviously that's an ingredient in beer. Typically you're going to see barley or wheat most of the time, sometimes oats, corn, rice, all that good stuff too, but you will very rarely see rye as uh, an ingredient in beer. It's much more common in whiskey. Obviously, you have rye whiskey out there as a, as a whole subset of whiskey, um, but it's also common in bourbon as well. It is a little bit of a tricky ingredient to work with in beer brewing, though, because it produces a high amount of something called beta glucans uh, when you put it in the mash. What Basically what that means is it gums up the mash in the same way that wheat does uh, because of that high amount of beta glucans. Um, this is something you can avoid by using rice hulls or just by not adding too much rye into your mash. Otherwise though, rye is a pretty cool ingredient. It adds a whole different flavor that's a lot more interesting than just wheat or barley or oats. Um, and it brings in a, a really nice, rich, deep earthiness to a beer, um, something you don't really get out of those other grains. It has a little bit of like a subtle spiciness to it too. Um, it's not really spicy in the way that rye bread is spicy. That's a different thing. Um, but rye malt has a little zip to it if you're really looking for it. I think in American beers, rye is most frequently found in a rye IPA or rye PA. Um, it's, that's, you know, a nice, bold, malty American IPA, typically West Coast style, um, that's gonna be full of rye flavor, full of spiciness, and full of usually pretty aggressive hop flavor. Otherwise, you'll also see it in German Roggenbier, which is uh, basically either a rye lager, or you can actually make them with Weiss beer yeast as well. Um, and then it's kind of closer to a Dunkelweizen, but that's a really interesting beer style. We're gonna brew one of those eventually, uh, but that's not what this beer is. What we're doing today is just a simple rye, amber ale, or red ale. I really just want this beer to have two primary characteristics. The first is a very pronounced rye character that we can pick up on and uh, makes the beer, you know, something different than your typical amber ale. And secondly, I want it to have a brilliant red color. So I'm doing everything I can to dial in the beer's color to that magical 15 SRM number, which is where a beer turns scarlet red, and it's not copper, it's not brown. It's just right in the middle, it's that perfect uh, color. I am hopping this one rather aggressively, um, but I think because of the large amount of flavor that's gonna be in there from some of these malts, it's not necessarily going to reflect what the IBUs are saying. One thing to be aware of when you're using rye, it's a huskless grain, just like wheat. So that's one of the other reasons why it gums up the mash, because uh, it doesn't have any husks to provide channels for the wort to flow through uh, when you're sparging. So here you can see a rye kernel next to a barley kernel. Uh, note the husk on the barley, the rye is a little bit different. It's shaped a little bit more like a cigar. It's, so if you're milling your own malt, just make sure that you're setting that gap on your mill a little bit narrower than you would for barley, um, just so you can have a good, efficient crush on your malt. Don't be afraid to do it twice, especially if you're doing a brew in a bag or brew in a basket thing like I am. Northern Brewer typically supplies me with all of the uh, ingredients I need for my beer, um, which is awesome. Big shout out to Todd at Northern Brewer. I did not pick up these ingredients from him. I actually had this uh, idea today. It was a spur of the moment brew day. I just really wanted to brew today, and I had to go pick up some of those specialty ingredients like the rye. Regardless, make sure you check out Northern Brewer anyway if you're looking for ingredients and stuff like that. So let's jump into the recipe section now. So for starters, we're going to be doing eight pounds of two-row base malt, uh, just a basic two-row. That's all you need. I'm using RAR. On top of that, we're adding two pounds of malted rye. You can use flaked rye as well if you have that. On top of that, we're adding a pound and a half of Best Malt's Red X. Uh, this is a really cool malt that I've used before. It's kind of got the characteristics of both Munich Malt and Crystal 60, um, without being a true crystal malt. So I've made a beer with 100% Red X before, wouldn't recommend it, um, but it has a lot more of the Munich character than the crystal character, but it's going to get you a really nice red color. Um, on top of that, I'm adding half a pound of Crystal 60 for some added sweetness to back up some of the breadiness that's going to be in here and to kind of balance out some of the aggressive bittering that we're going to have. And then I'm going to add half a pound of Victory Malt on top of that. Now this is going to be a toasty, nutty, kind of like a dry toast character um, that I think is going to complement the rye pretty well. And then lastly, we're going to dial in that red character by adding about just a little under two ounces of Carafa 3 dehusked. That's gonna hopefully help us get that perfect red color. We'll see how that works out. Uh, for our hops, we're gonna use one ounce of Columbus at 60 minutes to bitter. 
Um, and then we're gonna add an ounce and a half of Centennial at zero minutes. Hopefully this will give us a nice citrus aroma on top of a good aggressive bitterness that's gonna cut through some of the sweetness here. Uh, but leave the rye character in the middle somewhat untouched, hopefully. For our yeast, I'm going to be using a new yeast I've never used before. Uh, Lalamand BRY97 West Coast Ale Yeast. This is slightly different than uh, your typical uh, USO5 Chico strain West Coast Ale. This is a different strain. Um, I believe it's akin to the American Ale 2. I'm not 100% sure though, so do correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but supposedly it's just basically a very clean, neutral, dry ale yeast. I'm using a dry ale yeast because I don't have time to make a starter, um, and dry yeast is getting pretty good nowadays. So for the water profile, I'm gonna be gearing this one towards a relatively balanced amber beer, but with a good emphasis on the sulfates, just so we have a good dry finish on this. Uh, so we're gonna be using 75 parts per million of calcium, 10 parts per million of magnesium, 27 parts per million of sodium, 79 parts per million of chloride, 112 parts per million of sulfate, 70 parts per million of bicarbonate. And in order to get that profile, I'm gonna be adding four grams of gypsum, three grams of epsom, five grams of calcium chloride, and three grams of baking soda to the mash water. So we'll be mashing this for 60 minutes at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of the higher percentage of kind of crystal toasted uh, type malts in here, I'm gonna want to mash this a bit lower. Hopefully we'd uh, cut down on the amount of residual sugars by doing that. All in all, this should be a pretty fun brew day, so uh, I'm interested to see how it goes. Everything is all heated up to temperature now, so let's go over there and mash it. I added eight gallons of distilled water to my claw hammer supply 120 volt system and started to heat it up to mash temperature. While it was heating, I measured out all of my water salts and I added them to the strike water. And I also milled all of my grain. Once the water reached the mash in temperature, I mashed in with a grain bill, being sure to break up any clumps that were in the mash. Uh, next, I started the recirculation. I let the mash sit at 150 Fahrenheit for 60 minutes, but 10 minutes in, I took a pH reading and I saw a slightly above target pH of 5.6. So I added a few milliliters of lactic acid to correct for this. Once the mash had sat for 45 minutes, I raised to the mash out temperature of 170 and I let it sit there for 15 minutes. Then I pulled out the grain basket and let that drain for 15 minutes. I fired up the controller to 100% power while this was going on so that I could just get a jump start on the boil. I pulled a sample of work for the pre-boil gravity reading and I saw a measurement of 13.2 bricks or 1052, which was actually exactly my pre-boil gravity target. Once I reached the boil, I added my 60 minute bittering addition, which was one ounce of Columbus. Once 45 minutes had elapsed, I added a Wilflock tablet and some yeast nutrients. I let the boil continue for another 15 minutes and then I killed the boil by starting to recirculate boiling work through the chiller and the pump. As usual, this is just my opinion, but it's the best way to ensure sanitation of your chilling equipment with the boiling temperatures. At this time, I also added an ounce and a half of Centennial for my zero minute hop addition. After being sure the inside of the chiller and the pump were all sterilized, I then began to chill down to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I took my original gravity sample, and I saw an original gravity of 14.2 bricks, or about 1056, which was actually a full four points lower than the target OG. Uh, but no matter, I still aerated by splashing into my anvil bucket fermenter, and then I pitched my yeast onto it and left it to ferment at 68 degrees.
All right, so now let's talk about fermentation for this beer. Should be really simple, very straightforward. Uh, this is a dry ale yeast. It is an American West Coast ale style yeast, which basically means that it's gonna be a clean fermenter and a relatively good attenuator, and it's gonna ferment best probably around 65 to 68 degrees. This yeast can go a little higher than that. It can go up into the low 70s if you wanna push it. It will get a little fruity in those uh, situations, but otherwise you should be all right. I would definitely not recommend uh, fermenting this type of uh, beer with any sort of English ale yeast though, because those can get very fruity and very like, uh, which can be good in some styles and not very good in others. Uh, it's not going to play very well with the rye, uh, so I would definitely recommend against that. But if you want to use any other type of clean fermenting ale yeast, um, so, or even a lager yeast, if you just want to do that, you know, you're good to go. So some of the USO5 will do just as well in a spear. Uh, a German ale yeast is always a good clean, malty choice. Um, and then maybe something like uh, a Lutra Kvike. I would stay away from Voss because that can get kind of orangey and orange plus rye equals a weird flavor. So otherwise, if you want to go with liquid yeast, the uh, same strain as USO5 is available as WLP001 or Y yeast 1056. Um, otherwise, if you want a yeast that's closer to what I'm doing, I would go for, like I said, the American Ale 2 from Y Yeast, or something like that. But you get my point, it's a very flexible beer for brewing with different yeasts, as long as you hold off on the estery kinds and ferment it clean. As long as it's a clean yeast, then you're gonna be good to go. Uh, the cow lager used to do pretty well as well. Other than that, it's really simple. We're leaving it at 65 to 68 degrees. If you want to pressure ferment this one, go for it. If you want to dry hop this beer and do something different, I'm not doing that, but if you want to do it, go ahead. I know it's a good beer for it. This is a great beer to just kind of experiment with and go off on a tangent with and see what happens. There's really not too much to it, so it's pretty simple and quick fermentation. So in a nutshell, I'm just gonna ferment this about 65 to 68, probably gradually increase that temperature up to 68 degrees, probably for about 10 to 14 days. At that point, it'll be done fermentation, we'll transfer to a keg, we'll force carbonate, we'll serve. So I'll see you in a couple weeks. Here's the final gravity for the red rye ale. Uh, it's coming in at about 10.12 or 10.11, probably about 10.12. Uh, so yeah, right on target. So the fermentation on this beer went amazingly well. Uh, the Lalamon BRY97 yeast absolutely ripped through the beer. Um, I actually hit my final gravity in four days. Um, I let it stay in the fermenter for another several days or so just to kind of clean things up if needed. But honestly, the final gravity sample tasted pretty good. Um, so I probably could have just kegged it at that point if I really wanted to rush this beer along. But overall, I would say the fermentation lasted about seven days from when I put it into the fermenter versus when I kegged it. Then I put it in my kegerator, I set my regulator to about 10 PSI, and I let it carbonate up for about five or six days, and it was good to go. Um, this beer is tasting very, very good. It's good that I finally did a rye ale because now I kind of have a better understanding of what rye flavor actually is, and I think you're gonna see that in the tasting segment. It's a really nice red color, and it has some really wonderful, tasty, malty character to it that uh, I really, really found myself enjoying. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and pour this beer. So the beer is called Rise to the Occasion. Uh, it comes in at 5.8% ABV and 62 IBUs. So for the appearance of the beer, it's a nice, totally clear uh, red copper color. Um, it's a little on the dark side, but it's definitely very red. I'm also very impressed with how clear this came out. It's nice to see that happen relatively fast after brewing a beer. Uh, it pours with a, a decent kind of cream colored head. Surprisingly, it doesn't really have all that good of head retention, um, but it does have good lacing um, and a good layer uh, that it leaves on the surface after the main head falls. So now we'll go in for aroma. I'm getting a semi-sweet, semi-malty aroma. Um, there's definitely a little bit of kind of a fruity hop character and a bit of a fruity yeast ester as well. So it has like a little bit of a berry and a little bit of a sweet kind of um, toasted caramel. 
It's a pretty pleasant smell. It smells like a standard amber ale right there. So now we'll go in for mouthfeel. The mouthfeel on this is really nice. It's like a medium light kind of character. It's neither too minerally nor too heavy nor too light. It's got some soft edges, nothing too crazy. Um, not much to really talk about here uh, other than the fact that it is very pleasant. <laughs> All right, so now we'll go in for flavor. Mm. This is really loaded with flavor, um, especially if you like multi beers. It's a it's a multi beer, um, even though I did put uh, 62 IBUs worth of hops in there. I think there's definitely something up with the IBU calculator uh, on Beersmith in kind of overestimating or in kind of giving you the impression it's going to be more bitter than it is. In reality, though, this has a lot of maltiness in it. It has a lot of extra character due to the malt. Um, that is definitely going to be masking some of that hop bitterness. It, the bitterness on it is there, it's clean, it's definitely not an IPA. Um, it's what you'd expect out of an American Amber Ale, I would say. Uh, really, really nice middle in this. Just a rich, biscuity, um, kind of almost caramely middle. It's got a really, really good full malty graininess to it. So it's got a really nice dry toastiness to it, which is probably coming from that Victory Malt. Um, but it also has a really rich, just delicious, um, I guess, earthy character from, from the rye. I'm definitely not getting a rye bread spice, um, and that's something that I think we need to kind of point out here. Rye itself as a malt isn't really going to provide too much spiciness. Um, what you're thinking of is caraway seed when you think about this kind of spiciness or zippiness, I guess, of rye bread. Um, that's not what rye malt does. What rye malt is giving me is this really nice, rich kind of deep earthy grainy character um, which adds a tremendous amount of dis dimension to this beer uh, it's really really coming through in a really really nice way I honestly love this um, I honestly love the way it's coming through I, I think this beer is really really tasty the hops come through really nicely in this a little bit of floral a little bit of grapefruit um, a little bit of tropical fruit kind of it actually blends really really well with the rest of the malt character in this beer um, in a very, very pleasant way. Now this beer is really a very malt forward beer. I mean, that's kind of the most interesting aspect of its whole flavor profile is just how many different uh, malt flavors you're really getting out of it. Um, the more I'm sitting here and thinking about this and actually trying to break down the flavor descriptors I'm trying to use, the more I just come up with kind of things in real life that are actually, you know, what this beer sort of tastes like. So I'm thinking bread crust mixed with like Cheerios with a little bit of like a kind of grape nuts cereal type flavor. Also of note is the yeast that I use, the Lalaman BRY97 West Coast Ale. I am floored by how well that performed. So number one, it fermented extremely fast. Uh, I had the fermentation completed in less than a week. Number two, it dropped out extremely fast and clear, as you can see here. Uh, so that was great. And number three, it left a really, really nice flavor profile, sort of a mild berry ester, um, and that's about it. It's it's really great. Nice mouthfeel on it, not too hard, not too soft. Um, just very happy with the way that the yeast worked out. And it's a dry yeast. I think if I had fermented this with a US05, I probably would have had a very different result. And granted, that's not exactly the same strain. That's kind of the whole point. Um, I don't think this beer would have been as good if I had used US05. I'm really happy with this beer. It's uh, it's really enjoyable. It's nice, not too strong too. Um, this recipe could definitely be scaled up or down in different ways too. Um, there's a lot you can play around with it, like I said, uh, in the fermentation section. But I think one thing I might do a little bit differently next time is just add a little bit more hop character. Um, it can stand up to a lot of hops, and I think maybe adding in a little bit more bitterness at the beginning and maybe adding in a little even more of boost of Centennial at the back end, maybe even dry hopping with Centennial. But at the end of the day, I think I really would just like a little bit more hop expression, um, especially since Centennial is such a wonderful, tasty hop. I think in the future, BRY97 is probably going to become my replacement yeast for US05 and American styles. It's, I don't really see a reason not to use it. It's just such a solid beer, I had to get myself another one. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to brew this beer, I highly recommend you do. And if you do, let me know. And if you enjoyed something and you liked the video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe for more of this sort of content. If you want to support the channel, I have a variety of ways to do so. First of all, you can check out my t-shirt store down below the description box where you can find some pretty awesome t-shirt designs. Um, more new ones coming soon. 
but also I have a Patreon, which is linked in the description box as well. My Patreon supporters are fantastic people that have really been driving a lot of the production behind this channel, and it really makes a big difference to me uh, to have their support. I also have an Amazon store in the description box as well, where you can find some other homebrewing equipment, stuff that I personally have used and generally recommend based on my usage of it. If it's on Amazon and I've actually used it before and like it, it's on that store. So please check that out if you're in the market for some equipment. If you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram as The Apartment Brewer, where you will see slightly more frequent content updates. Last but certainly not least, if you are still here, thank you very much for being here. It does mean a whole lot to me. So, until the next one, cheers. And NBC.